Hello everyone, I'm Niriti Negi and today I'm going to talk about an ancient civilization, the Roman civilization. One of the classical civilization is the Roman civilization. We did talk about the Greek civilization and today we are going to discuss about the architecture and the furniture in ancient Rome. Well, Roman civilization is marked by energy, ambition, and it's all about conquest and expansion because this civilization, uh, whatever we see in architecture or in furniture is totally influenced by the expansion, the authority of the Roman Empire in those times. So focusing on the Roman architecture, well, most of it, the techniques that the Romans adapted was from the Etruscans and the Greeks. So it was the Greek architecture which was adapted by the Romans and then they put in their own creativity and they made their own style and that is how they came up with the Roman uh, architectural style. The Roman architectural style again is all about experimentation. They discovered quite a lot of things like they discovered the concrete and that was used a lot by the Romans and because there was concrete they could think of structures which were no longer uh, very rectangular or very square in shape like the Greek uh, structures. Uh, they could think of uh, masonry. Uh, actually, if you uh, just reflect, go back to the Greek architecture where we said that they use basically the sun-dried bricks and the kiln-dried bricks and stone. So stone was one of the um, material which the Greeks were using, but they had to use big slabs of stone and they could not do much about the lintel, they had small openings. But the, the Romans, they discovered the, uh, the concrete and they also uh, started using the masonry. So they could join bricks together, they could join the stones together and they could make circular forms, overlooking forms and uh, that's what we see in their architecture. So their architecture is basically, uh, the highlight of the architecture, if we have to say, would be the arches and the domes. Now arch, if you see the civil part of it, the construction of an arch happens when you join individual units. Those units could be either brick, they could be stone, or they could simply be um, any other material. So when you join them together, uh, they are basically, uh, coming together of these units together which make good compressive strength but slightly weak in the tensile strength but because of the arch they could or the Romans could have bigger openings in their buildings so the arch was one invention by the uh, Romans and the arch then gave rise to the dome so the dome which was never present in any of the Greek buildings was a very uh, new element which we saw which we see in the Roman architecture. The milding material, like I mentioned, was stone, uh, the sun-dried bricks and the kiln-dried bricks and the concrete. So concrete was one major discovery by the uh, Romans, which led to a lot of things. Like, for example, even if they were constructing in normal looking bricks, they could face that building with a very expensive stone like marble so facing what I mean is uh, you have a construction in any uh, material. You could even have a rubble. Rubble is just a, a non-shaped stone. If you just put it all together with concrete, but on the outside you face it with an expensive stone like marble or granite. So this is what the Romans did. They uh, completely changed the whole of Rome. They were very fond of marble and that is why Rome is also associated with marble. So the entire city was turned to marble. So they did not use marble in full, uh, you know, like full blocks of marble, but they used it as a facing material in most of the building construction that they did. So that was uh, the uh, Roman architecture for you. The preferred structure here was the civic buildings, uh, which were to honor uh, the empire. So any building which was uh, erected was basically to uh, highlight the, uh, the majesty or the grandeur of the Roman Empire. 
and that we see uh, when we uh, study ahead the kind of structures which they erected they all were basically highlighting or honoring the empire the support system was of course the rounded arch uh, it was not the lintel and the columns it was the columns and the rounded arch which the romans used they connected their entire city with a network of uh, good street so they have good town planning so they also came about with the um, road infrastructure connecting one city to the another city because the empire was spreading and they realized the importance of connecting cities with good roads so a network of streets and road also came up during uh, the roman empire in the ancient rome the characteristic features of this architecture would be first the arches uh, since they had discovered the concrete they could join up bricks or they could join up stones to make arches and arch gave them uh, freedom to have bigger openings in the walls the arch was first used in bridges so the bridges that they were making uh, to span uh, across the rivers were made with these arches then the arches were used in aqueducts now aqueducts um, are basically aqui with the word aqui stands for water and ducts uh, something which carries the supply of water so these aqueducts were uh, pre uh, present all over the roman empire they were basically overhead carriers of water from the source to the cities now when roman uh, during roman empire the people were shifting from the villages to the towns and since the the uh, population increased the uh, supply of water was much in demand and to meet that supply what they constructed was aqueducts from the water source uh, to the cities so aqueducts carry these waters and aqueducts had these arches uh, which were used arches were also used in arcades so the roman architecture primarily used a lot of arches they used the arches in the triumphal arches also um, triumphal arches while well, the word triumph means victory so these were arches generally erected in the middle of the city to honor their leaders or to mark uh, some victory of their emperor so th those were just erected they were stylized uh, arches which were erected in the middle of the city to mark or honor a uh, leader so those were the arches besides arches uh, there were columns which the romans used a lot uh, they got inspired by the greek architecture the greeks if, if you remember they used the doric order they used the ionic order and they used the corinthian order of course the greeks used a lot of doric order but it was the corinthian order which was highly popular with the romans besides these three basic orders the romans also uh, invented two more orders that is the tuscan order and the composite order the doric order which the uh, romans used was slightly different it was more slender in fact all the orders that they were using were slender they were smaller in size uh, the composite order was uh, was used a lot the composite the word composite means combination so the composite order was a combination of the ionic orders the volutes that we saw in the ionic order and the canthus leaves of the corinthian order so it was a combination of the corinthian and the ionic order the tuscan order was a very simple looking order just like the doric order it did not have very fancy capital and the entire column was smooth it did not have any kind of fluting uh, but of course it had a base so these were the five orders which were used a lot in uh, the architecture in the construction of buildings all over uh, rome besides column another thing another discovery which uh, the romans uh, have given to us is the mosaic now mosaic the word as you all would be familiar with stands for a small uh, you must have heard about the mosaic tiles that we use uh, basically they are small tiles which we put together and we create a pattern or we create a painting 
uh, you must have seen it a lot being used in uh, nowadays in bathrooms or even on the floor now the uh, romans used it they discovered this art the mosaic art initially they used round small pebbles which were colored so they used these different colored stones which they would put together and make beautiful uh, geometrical patterns and later they started making floral patterns on their ground so their uh, just the the ground or the uh, ground treatment was not just simple cemented floor their floors were highlighted with this beautiful mosaic art in fact a mosaic art which started off with these small round pebbles advanced to a very very high level they started using tesserae of uh, you know small uh, ceramic tiles or even glass so these tiles and these glass these uh, small pieces were put together and the finest paintings of those times was created in fact mosaic artists or the mosaicists were even hired by uh, people who lived uh, who had a lot of money they were hired by them to create these beautiful paintings in mosaic form on their walls or on their um, flooring so flooring was just not the simple cemented flooring it was now mosaic art flooring so mosaic art is one more um, characteristic feature of uh, the roman houses and the roman public buildings uh most of the mosaic art can be seen in the houses in olynthus which were made in 5th century bc in fact one of the houses has this uh, mosaic work which looks like you know leftover debris of the previous night party so it is so genuine to look at that when you look at the flooring you feel there are some leftover pieces from the party but it's actually not that it is the mosaic work which is so beautifully done so romans used the mosaic art a lot to do up the interiors uh, other than that the other thing that they used to highlight or to ornament and decorate the interiors was the paintings paintings were highly advanced in the roman time they indulged in all these art forms a lot of money was flowing into the empire so uh, painters were given a lot of uh, financial support and they were asked to do beautiful paintings the paintings were of various style uh, like if i have to say the first style was the masonry style where they would paint on the wall uh, something to look like marble but it was not actually marble or they would paint on the wall to make it look like a brick so that was masonry style then was the second style which was the architectural style where all the elements that are that go into architecture like the columns and the arches they would be made uh, in a painting form in fact they would be made so finely with so much depth that people sometimes actually thought that there was a door or they actually thought that there was a column standing uh, so that is how uh, the painting looked so that was the architectural style so you must understand that uh, in ancient uh, roman interiors most of the houses did not have uh, many windows they did not have very good views so since it was a very bland interior that they have with no window openings they did up their walls with these amazing paintings so the paintings itself had depth in them they gave you that feeling of entering another room or more rooms but actually it was just a painting on the wall so that was the second style the architectural style the third style uh, rejected all this architectural and the masonry style and in fact they promoted ornamentation like uh, making fine garland work or um, you know framing uh, the painting so that was the third style the fourth style was a combination of all and this fourth style can be seen in the houses at pompeii there's a story which goes for the houses at pompeii sometime in 79 ad uh, the city of uh, pompeii uh, came under this lava from the eruption of the volcano mount vesuvius now one mount vesuvius uh, erupted the entire town of herculaneum and pompeii came under this and it got trapped 
and it was much later sometime in 18th century that the houses of Pompeii were discovered. Now, in a way it was a blessing because these houses, uh, the, the work, the craft, the paintings, all that was intact buried inside this uh, volcano and that is what we see uh, in these houses. It was discovered in 18th century and when we look at these houses, it is there that we discover all these styles of paintings. We discover beautiful sculpture work which the ancient Romans did. We discovered be beautiful mosaic art that the uh, Romans were indulging in. So that we discovered in the houses at Pompeii. So in fact, the fourth style of painting which is a combination of all these styles of painting is very much evident in all the houses at Pompeii. Other than paintings, stucco work or the plaster work is again a discovery by the Romans and they used it a lot in their uh, interiors. They did plaster work on their walls, they did plaster work on the ceilings, so they had the coffered ceiling. Uh, they would not leave anything flattened out, they would give 3D effects with this plaster work. In fact, because of the discovery of stucco or the plaster, they could make things like uh, fic fictitious columns, they could make pediments, they could make uh, cornices to decorate or to adapt the styles from the uh, Greek architecture. And that is why when I said that the because of the discovery of concrete and because of the discovery of stucco and plaster, Romans used a lot of Corinthian order which was not really used by the Greeks. Now let us look at two very important structures made by the Roman Empire. The Colosseum is the greatest of all amphitheatres. It is a massive ancient Roman structure. It was designed to serve as a location for bloodshed shows. The ancient Roman community would travel to enormous amphitheatre to be spectators of battles between gladiators, combats between men and mock naval battles. The Colosseum was uh, to seat about 50,000 spectators on marble and wooden benches. The overall structure measured about 620 feet long and 510 feet wide and its central arena calculated to be 285 feet long and 180 feet wide. To separate the spectators from the entertainment, a wall of about 15 feet high was included. Under the arena, a maze of corridors, cells and equipment was built. It also held trap doors and hidden elevators to allow animals and men to go up and down. The structure itself carried a particular characteristic of ancient Roman architecture, the arches. The Colosseum's first three stories were basically arches and columns. The decoration on these walls were more elaborate than the ones on the fourth story which was added later on. The first story was mainly entrances, but the second and third stories were decorated with a statue in each arch. An interesting fact about the building is that the fourth story walls held poles that contained awnings to shade from the sun and guard from the rain. The entire structure was formed by brick and concrete, a typical ingredient in ancient Roman architecture. The Colosseum had 78 entrances for the normal people and two reserved for the emperor giving a total of 80 entrances. The Pantheon. The Pantheon as its name suggests is a temple for all gods built during the reign of the Roman emperor Hadrian. Hadrian dedicated the temple to the Roman gods after it was completed. Constructed from brick and concrete, the Pantheon is a circular building which measures about 142 feet in diameter and has a gigantic dome, dome of 142 feet above the floor to its highest point. The roof of the rectangular porch which extends from the entrance is triangular and supported by the eight Corinthian columns which look like any other regular Greek temple. The interior of the Pantheon is highly emphasized with its major characteristics of the building. It is decorated with marble and lit by an opening in the dome on the top 
which is called the oculus. And now let's have a look at the furniture which was being used in ancient Rome. The ancient Romans, what is the kind of furniture that they use? Let's have a look at that. Well, most of the furniture form that the ancient Romans were using was adapted from the Greek style. So all that we saw in the Greek style, the, uh, the stools, the chairs, the couch, all that was used by the Romans with a slightly uh, more uh, touch which they gave to that furniture. The most of the furniture form was massive in scale because if you remember when we were discussing the architecture in ancient Rome, the houses were huge and massive. It had to showcase the wealth of the Roman Empire. So most of the houses and the interiors were huge and uh, to match the scale of the rooms, the furniture form which was designed was also massive. So the furniture was massive, however, not many furniture pieces were used in ancient Roman interiors because uh, if you remember, I, we talked about the flooring treatment that the Romans did. They used mosaic art, they used, uh, uh, they used on the ceiling, they used POP work, on the, on the walls they would use mosaic art or they would do painting. So there was so much done on the walls, on the floor, on the ceiling that there was, uh, they had to cut down on something. So they did not use uh, many furniture forms which were highly ornamental. They were very uh, basically decorated and ornamented. Most of the ornamentation was done uh, as an inlay work. Uh, inlay could be of either a bone or ivory or they would do veneer work with some precious wood or carve out uh, high relief and low relief carvings on these uh, furniture pieces. The legs of most of the furniture forms were either turned in a lathe machine or they were uh, made to look like legs of animals or they would simply be columnar. Now by the word columnar what I mean is that the legs of these furniture forms were made to represent the columns or the orders that we talked about like the Doric order, the Ionic order. So they were fluted and they were made to look like columns. So that is how most of the legs of the furniture forms looked like. Uh, the table was basically three-legged. That was the most commonly and the most popular table, the three-legged table. If not three-legged, then there would be a monopodium that is a one single uh, stand or they would be slab ends, that is you have a top and the ends of the slab of this table would be carved uh, and uh, the carving would be of any mythological figure like a sphinx or anything like that. The tables which were made were either of wood or they would be of stone. Uh, it would be marble that they would use a lot because marble was a preferred stone, a stone which uh, Romans liked and so that's why they had marble tops. The chairs which the Romans used was again inspired from the Greeks. So most of the chairs had these curved concave backs uh, to suit the human body. Uh, the Clismos chair was adapted by the Romans. They had cushioned uh, uh, seats. Uh, they even had this uh, curule chair which was a folding chair. So it interlocked and it folded up and it could be carried anywhere which they desired. Besides the curule chair and the Clismos chair, they also made throne chairs. Now these throne chairs uh, were very, very popular and they were made of stone. Uh, in, in, the, in the palaces they would be kept or sometimes they would be made permanently in amphitheaters like the Colosseum. Uh, it had these uh, throne chairs for high officials and for the emperor and the king and the queen. Besides that, for the normal people, there would be normal benches which were used, again made of stone. So stone was used quite a lot as a material for uh, construction of furniture. The stone chairs, the stone thrones, the stone tables were all used but, and the wood was the other thing which was used. Couch is another important furniture item which was used in the Roman households. The couches were again adapted from the Greeks. They had a uh, uh, back 
uh, back where a person could recline and uh, he could uh, rest or he could even dine. So couch was used for sitting as well as for sleeping. There were beds which were used, were four poster beds with elaborate uh, massive headboards. Uh, there would be drapes which were used in these beds, uh, net gauzy looking material for uh, summers and heavy drapes for winters uh, to keep the person inside these beds warm because if you remember the interiors were very huge and massive so the place was very cold. To have a bed with these drapes would make a cozy uh, small place to sleep in. So beds were used with these drapes. The other important piece of furniture which the Romans introduced was the metal furniture. They used all sorts of uh, metals, the bronze and even silver for that matter. And the most uh, accomplished of all metal furnitures would be the tripod table, high looking tables which were used. Uh, they were again very very delicately carved and they were used quite a lot in ancient Rome. The accessories that the ancient uh, interiors would uh, comprise of would be vases, sculpture, paintings, candle stands, mirrors, mirrors with uh, very elaborate looking uh, uh, you know sides. So the mirrors had these frames which were very very elaborately carved out or they would be gold gilded. Sometimes they would even have precious stone work. So this, these are the accessories that most of the interiors use. So this is uh, how you will also use uh, if you have to do up an interior in a Roman style. Roman style basically stands for grand looking, massive, very impressive interiors. So when you think of Roman interiors and when you want to do something in Roman style, think about luxury, think about silk, think about marble. Think about everything that you can think as to do with grand. So adapt all your pillars, your columns, uh, use all sorts of uh, decoration in terms of mosaic art, paintings, mural art, stucco, plaster of Paris work. So all this, put it all together and that's what makes great Roman interiors.